Hey everybody, Chad with Patriot Astro, and I'm here to talk a little bit more about Nina and some functionality you may not know about. In a previous video, I talked to you about the manual filter wheel and Nina's ability to prompt you when a filter change needed to occur. Well, today I'm gonna to show you another manual device that you can use within Nina. This time, it's the manual rotator. So why would you use a manual rotator? Well, let's say you wanna get your framing just right. Maybe it's a single shot, or maybe it's a multi-panel mosaic. The way the manual rotator works within Nina is that during plate solving, it will tell you how much to rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise so that you get the exact framing you wanted. It'll continue to do this through various iterations until you're within your defined tolerance. I'm gonna show you how I did this on two of my telescopes, my 61 EDPH2 and my Celestron C8 SCT. On the C8, I'm using an OAG and I'll give you some tips there as well. While this feature will work anywhere within the product, there is a specific instruction you can use to make sure that it works even within your advanced sequences. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, watch some other videos, and share it with others as well. Here I am in Nina and I'm in the Sky Atlas and I'm gonna do a quick search and we'll just pick Andromeda here. I'll go ahead and stretch this so we can see the full screen. You'll notice I've loaded four degrees field of view here on the 6180PH2 because I'm shooting at about 275 millimeters. The rectangle in the middle is my field of view. So that should represent my sensor and it's based on the camera parameters to the left, which come from your settings. Now, if you look at what we see here, we can see that Andromeda is kind of tipped to the side and it's not fitting the way I'd like it to fit. So if we draw a line here, just to show you how it is currently framed up, I'm gonna go ahead and do a slew and center. So this is my framing, but now I'm gonna take a picture with my telescope, center that image, and we'll see what it actually looks like on my current sensor. So let's go ahead, now that we're centered and we've plate solved accurately, let's go ahead and take a 30 second luminance exposure. So when this comes back, and I'm gonna speed this up, you'll see that the framing doesn't exactly match what I expected. Now, don't worry so much about 180 degrees off. Think more about the rectangle, whether it's right side up or upside down, typically doesn't matter. You can sort that out pretty easily. It's about squaring up the object. So what I wanna do is fix this framing. We can do that in the framing wizard with the slider bar to rotate my framing, but there's a problem. How am I gonna translate that to a plate solve? Well, within Nina, if you go into equipment and rotator, there is a Nina device called a manual rotator. Simply select it and enable it, and now you're connected. And just like the manual filter wheel, basically this is just a way for us to trick Nina into thinking we have a rotator, and in this case, a manual rotator that will prompt us when needed. So we'll go ahead and frame this, and I'm gonna use the slider bar here to change the rotation. Now this is more accurately how I would like to frame up this image. You can see we're sort of parallel to the long side of the rectangle. Now most of you may never have clicked this drop down arrow here. You just click slew and center. But I do want you to know that there is a slew option and a slew center and rotate. Now because we have a rotator, we're going to select slew, center, and rotate. Once the plate solve is ready, it will plate solve and look at your rotation. Here we can see our current position is 270.69 degrees, but our target is 230 degrees. So it's telling me I need to go to my telescope and rotate counterclockwise a little over 40 degrees. So on my 61 EDPH2 telescope, there's a manual rotator built in. I can grab my imaging train and the rotator. I can rotate it approximately 40 degrees counterclockwise. Now I can come back to Nina and click OK. It will initiate another plate solve. It's going to look at the framing as well as the rotation again. You can see here I got close, but not perfect and not within my tolerance. We need to go another four or so degrees clockwise. So I'll make that subtle correction, come back to Nina and click OK. It'll do another plate solve. Now at this point, it's going to plate solve, look at the rotation. Once it determines the rotation is okay, it'll do a final plate solve based on centering. 
I have my plate solve tolerance set to one and a half arc minutes, so this is within the defined tolerance. So let's go back and take an image now with the camera. So I'll go ahead and take an image, and what you'll notice here, based on the framing I've put in the bottom right hand corner, we have an accurate representation now of how we wanted it to be framed for imaging. So let me just show you some of the tolerances. In Nina, go to Options Plate Solve, and notice just like you have a pointing tolerance, you also have a rotational tolerance. Here I've set mine to one degree, so my rotation must be within one degree. I'm going to go ahead and do this again, this time on my C8SCT, and in this case, I'm going to do it with part of the North American Nebula, and I'm going to grab something that's pretty obvious, and I, I currently have it framed this way without a rotator installed. So we're going to do a plate solve to make sure we're on target. I'm going to take a 60 second hydrogen alpha exposure to see how my camera sensor is actually displaying this, and you can see we're off by almost 90 degrees when you look at this. Well, I want to make sure that this is framed the way I want it to be framed, so what do we do? We go into Nina and we connect the manual rotator. Once the manual rotator is connected, I'll come back into framing and I'm gonna change the framing a little. So let's lay it out the way we want it to be laid out. So this is how I wanna lay it out. Now with the rotator connected, when I do my plate solve, and again, I'm doing a slew center and rotate, I'm going to have to make an adjustment, in this case, 15 degrees counterclockwise. Now with an OAG, I'm only going to loosen the thumb screws on the other side of my guiding camera so that I don't change the position of the guiding camera and won't need to recalibrate PHD2. So I'm only gonna change the rotation of the camera itself. And you'll see it takes a couple iterations in this case. It is possible to change the rotation of the entire imaging train, but you may not want to do that because it may require, again, recalibration. So let's complete our plate solve. It looks like we've got our angles right. It looks like we're centered. We're good to go. Let's just verify this by going back and taking another 60 second HA exposure. Okay, so there's the framing in the bottom right that I expected and here's what I have on screen. Looks pretty good. One other thing I wanna show you, if you add this framing to an advanced sequence and I'll use one of the ones that I've shared, you may want to make an adjustment. Notice I've previously shared sequences with slew and center. There's another plate solve instruction you can use in its place called slew, center, and rotate. This one will force the rotation aspect as well and not just the centering of the plate solve. So just something else to consider if you do want to use the manual rotator, you may need to modify your advanced sequences. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll try to find more tidbits like this. I've got a lot of content coming, lots of good ideas, and several requests even coming directly from our subscribers. If you have questions, don't be shy. Make sure you ask in the comments, hit me up on Instagram, or go to my webpage and send me an email. Hope to see you back soon. Clear skies.